Alright, what is up guys? Go fish here. And oh my god, it's so hot today. But anyways, we're gonna be doing another video today. And this video is a tutorial on how to take care of spiny eels. In this case, I have a, uh, I actually have a uh, spiny eel. It's um, a peacock eel. Uh, so, the spiny eels is a family of eels. Uh, there's like fire eels, peacock eels, those are the ones I know on top of my head. But, um, there's a lot of eels that you can get at your local pet stores, alright? And most likely they're going to be uh, spiny eels. Now, this video today is a tutorial on how to take care of your spiny eels. Alright, so let's get started. Now, first thing you want to do is before you even get a meal, you want to make sure you have a 30 gallon tank or more. And that is with fish in it, but you can have a 20 gallon tank if you're just putting a meal. Uh, but I have a 43 gallon tank, um, and the uh, I have other fish in here, and the eel is pretty happy in here. So, next, what you want to do is have a good air, like oxygen rich water. So make sure that your water is good with o and oxygen rich. Have a, like a pH of 7, 7.5, uh, give or take a little bit. Um, and make sure that the gravel is like fine or sand. I don't like sand, I like the gravel, so I did fine gravel. So that way it's easier for him to burrow. Um, you want plants, like bushy plants for cover. Uh, so they feel safer and uh, lots of hiding spots, caves, such, such and such. Uh, they just feel safer inside that sort of thing. So my spiny eel, he'll eat every two days, all right? And every two days, I actually give him freeze-dried blood, or no, not freeze-dried. Don't use freeze-dried, they won't eat them. You get frozen bloodworms, they like come in these cubes. Here, uh, I'll just show you, uh, just a second. All right, these are what you want. Frozen blood worms, they come like this. Here, I'll take it out of the package. Um, they look like that. You just plop them in the water, they melt, and it disperses lots of blood worms. So I give them that every uh, two days. And when I, like, I just, because they they don't have a big appetite they'll probably like sometimes they won't even eat every two days they'll sometimes eat like every four days it's depending on the eel but my eel it likes to eat every two days um so you want a water circulator because eels actually come from the river uh so rivers they have a natural current so you want to replicate that with a water circulator I have one you can just see it it's right here right here that's the water circulator all right and it keeps it circulated oxygen it actually uh, oxygen like it gives more oxygen into the water as well um but you want it to actually be a little bit saltier than normal like not very like the other fish that much just don't go overboard um i'd probably say like an extra when you're changing water a 30 percent water change just add like an extra half a, like an eighth of a teaspoon of uh just regular uh stress salts or if you're using the uh cichlid the salts that i went over last video the uh cichlid lake salt do a half of it buffer that I showed you in the last video, the Lake Mallory slash Victoria buffer. Keeps it at the ideal pH for them. Keeps them pretty happy. Just put them in any water change. Now, they they need a water change weekly, 30%. No more than 30%. Could go a little bit less, but I'd say 30%. Uh, you want to keep the temperature around a uh, 75. Uh, 
mine's a little colder for that. It, if your house is like generally like it keeps in the 70s, like uh, 73, your house is like heated to always be 73 or something. You don't even need a heater, but I have a heater just in case for um, that purpose. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, but I think I covered everything. Um, yes, they can go with other eels, even different types. Just don't go overboard for the amount of space that you have and get similar sizes. If they're not the same size, they will tend to fight, but uh, I only have one eel. I, I didn't want to risk it and do more than one, but I know people have just normal just tanks, like with just eels in them. But I didn't do that. I, I don't think that's very good. I, I don't recommend that. So they go good. They go great with really any community fish, semi-aggressive community, aggressive community. Just if it's a, an aggressive community, make sure that there's plenty of hiding spots for him and monitor it. Make sure that he's not being picked on. And if he is being picked on, I would I would definitely move him or take out some of the aggressive fish. Uh, so. He can eat the fry of guppies if you're gonna put him in a guppy tank, but he, he generally won't bother the adult guppies, they're a little bit big for him. Well, but, like, they're a little bit big for when he's like a, probably 12 months, no, so 9 months old. Once he gets to about a year and 3 months old, I, I wouldn't put him in uh, guppy tanks. Because just that chance of him eating your guppies. But if you have a, like a lot of guppies, I'm sure he'll be fine. He just might eat some of the fry. Uh, it might be his food. You might not even have to feed him if you're, that's what your plan is. But if you're gonna do that, I'd make sure to monitor it. Make sure he's eating the guppy fry if that's what you're planning. But other than that, yeah. Um, some people actually, when they're older, they'll chop up like shrimp bits and different meats, and they'll eat that. I don't really recommend that. Their digestive tract isn't really good for that. I'd stick with the food designated for them because that's also rich in protein. It's like manufactured to be rich in protein and all the nutrients it needs. Uh, I'd say make sure to get a fluorescent light or like, because it's dimmer than an LED. They like a dimmer light. And um, my, my light is a uh, 14 watt. Here. I like it a lot, it kind of makes it look natural because it's not too bright, but it also gives enough light so that you can see everything, the signals aren't really affected, but I think it's just, that's perfect, 16.5 fluorescent bulb, um, and, but yeah, I keep, uh, I have a heavy filter for even any fish, like two filters maybe, um, both above the uh, gallon amount for your tanks, uh, just so it keeps it cleaner in there. They they don't really handle well inside murky waters, and because they actually can't see very well, they uh, they rely on their sight, but they can't see very well. Um, so. Don't make sure it's not too green or the water gets green. If the water gets green, treat it with algae control uh, every like two weeks if it gets green. I know I said in the last video I do every three weeks. That's because my water doesn't really get green. But um, if it does that every two weeks and change your water every week 30% with um, just regular tap water and treat the tap water with the salts, the buffer, and the uh, Plus. But yeah, he um, always feeds your other fish first so they won't steal his bloodworms because the other fish will eat the bloodworms if you don't feed them first and then he won't get a meal. Uh, it, 
it may look like a lot of blood worms when they all disperse, but by morning, they're all always gone. And I see him eat, just make sure he eats them. Uh, when I had him at first, he didn't eat for a whole week, but he started eating um, after about that week, a week and a half. And I was relieved by that, and I knew that he was going to be fine. But if he doesn't keep on eating for like a while, I'd give it like two and a half weeks, and then you start worrying. I'd try and find some live food, because he may not be, he, he may not like uh, dead food. A lot of eels are, but eels are very picky in general, um, but I've, I haven't had any trouble with them. Feeding him uh, dead food or anything like that. But yeah, the live food though, also be careful because they can establish colonies inside your tank. Like blood worms, they'll make colonies inside your tank, which can be a problem or a, a good thing. So it could either be food for him 24 7, or it could be a problem and overruns your tank. I just make monitor that if you're feeding them live worms and stuff. Make sure they eat them, take them out if they don't eat them. Or if you want that colony thing, just put them all in and they'll they'll make the colony. But um, I, I think I covered everything. Uh, comment below if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, peace out, guys. Later, my dudes. Vape niche, y'all. Oh, dab on them haters. Always dab on them haters. Jake Paul is number one. Logan, 34G, 1000.